supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Uh, math is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. Hi, you're 11. Welcome back to the channel. We're starting off today's lesson with some warm up Rebus puzzles. As always, if you think you can figure out what the common phrase or sayings are in these three pictures, let me hear about it in the comments below. Okay, today's lesson is all about differentiating exponential functions. So our last video was talking about the magic of the number e, which is about 2.718-ish. Uh, we looked at some of its uh, magical properties, and today we're talking more regards to calculus. So we mentioned in the last video that if you had a function that was y equals e to the x, so that's an exponential function where e is the base, if you found the derivative of this function, so you differentiated it, what you would find is you get the exact same thing. I'll prove this fact to you guys when we're on our next Zoom. It's kind of hard to do succinctly in a video, but for now, you're just going to have to believe me, and I'll prove it to you um, soon. All right, this property gets a little bit more complex when the power of the exponential is a bit more complex as well. So if it's just e to the power of x, the derivative is e to the power of x. If we had something more substantial, like e to the power of f of x, so we've got a power of a function, maybe it could be e to the x squared or something like that. What we do is, to differentiate it, we keep the exponential term the same, so it's still going to be e to the power of f of x, but what we do is we multiply by the derivative of the power. So it's kind of similar logic to when we're doing the chain rule. So the function is going to stay the same, we multiply by the derivative of the power, that's all there is to it. So hopefully this one is a bit straightforward today. It's weird at first, but you um, get the hang of it pretty quick, I'm hoping. Okay, and these properties lead to some um, obviously hilarious memes like you're seeing on your screen right now, because the fact that if you differentiate e to the x, it will never change. All right, kicking off with some examples. So we're gonna differentiate these four functions. So first one is 5e e to the x. Now I said differentiating e to the x is not gonna change it. And it's the exact same thing for if we found the derivative with respect to x of 5e e to the x. That's what d on dx means. It means the derivative in terms of x. So this thing is actually going to stay the exact same. It's still 5e e to the x. It doesn't matter if there's a constant out the front. It's still going to stay the same. And our derivative is the same as our original function. Okay, b is a little bit different because now the power is not just x, it's a little bit more complicated. It's now a power of 3x. So when we do the derivative of e to the 3x, the exponential term stays the same. We still have e to the 3x, but now we're going to multiply by the derivative of the power. So the derivative of 3x is 3, so we multiply by 3, and we have 3e e to the 3x as our final answer. Okay, next one is very similar logic. We're going to differentiate with respect to x. We've got e to the power of x squared minus 2x. So once again, that exponential term is going to remain the same. All we're going to do is we need to multiply by the derivative of what's in the index. So if we differentiated the index, we would get 2x take away 2. So we're going to do the original term, the original exponential term, multiplied by the derivative of the power. We can write that at the front or the back. It doesn't really matter where you put yours. I'm going to put mine at the front. e to the x squared minus 2x multiplied by 2x minus 2. And for question D, we've got a... Oh, my phone just went off. Pardon me. Sorry. All right, um, for the fourth one, e squared. Um, bit of a trick question. It's not going to be e squared as the answer, or it's not going to be 2e to the 1. Think about e is just a number. It is 2.7, etc. All right. What if I asked you to differentiate three? What would the answer be? Hopefully, you're saying to your screen right now, the derivative of three is zero, because the derivative of a constant is always nothing. A, because a constant is not changing, it's got no gradient function. E squared is just 2.7 ish squared. It's about the answer is about 7.4 from memory. So the derivative of a constant is always going to be zero. E is a constant, and so E squared is a constant. There's no x's here, so there's nothing to change. All right, a little bit more spicy ones now. First one we're going to differentiate is x cubed e to the 2x. So to differentiate this first one, 
we have what is a product. We have x cubed multiplied by e to the 2x. So now we've got to do the product rule for differentiating products. So we covered this in class uh, in our last topic. We're going to differentiate each of the individual pieces separately, and then we're going to sum together the answer. So for the first part, we're going to do, we're going to differentiate x cubed to get 3x squared. We're going to leave e to the 2x as it is, okay? Differentiate that, leave that alone. Now we do the opposite. Now we're going to leave x cubed alone and we're going to differentiate e to the 2x and we're going to add these two together. Okay, so x cubed stays as x cubed. We differentiate e to the 2x, which means we've got to multiply it by the derivative of the power. Derivative of 2x is 2. So we've got x cubed times 2e to the 2x as our second part. We'll simplify that a little bit, and that's a pretty good looking answer. We got 3x squared e to the 2x plus 2x cubed e to the 2x. If you wanna be a bit fancy, you can factorize your answer because you have common factors. You've got x squared and e to the 2x, which you can factor out the front, but um, this answer is not more correct than this one. They're both full marks answers. Okay, for the next one, we've got e to the 5x take away one, and the whole thing is to the power of four. So do you remember how we differentiated functions where the whole thing was done to a higher power we use what's called the chain rule we're going to do the same thing here we're going to differentiate using the chain rule so the chain rule says the power is going to come down the front we're going to subtract one from the power and then we'll multiply the answer by the derivative of what is inside the brackets so that's what we'll do we'll bring the four down the front power of three the bracket term stays the same and now we multiply by the derivative of what's inside so the derivative of e to the 5x, well, we're going to multiply by the derivative of the power. So if we differentiate e to the 5x, we'll get 5e to the 5x. And the derivative of 1, because it's a constant, is just going to be 0. So there is the derivative of the inside. Put these two together. So we've got 4 times 5e to the 5x is 20e to the 5x. Out the front of e to the 5x minus 1 cubed. So cool, chain rule. And for the last one, we are differentiating a fraction or a quotient. So to do this one, we're going to be using the quotient rule. So you might remember in class, we talked about this. We do derivative of the, so we do, sorry, we do bottom d top minus top d bottom over bottom squared. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're doing the bottom multiplied by the derivative of the top. So e to the x multiplied by the derivative of the top is just one. Now we do a minus, so that was bottom d top minus top d bottom. So we're gonna do the top multiplied by the derivative of the bottom. Luckily, the derivative of e to the x is still just e to the x. And then we're gonna do on the bottom, we're gonna do the bottom of the fraction squared. So we're gonna do e to the x squared. All right, we'll tidy up the top a little bit. So we'll have e to the x here, and we'll put the e to the x at the front of this parentheses term. And on the bottom, e to the x squared is just e to the two x because the two terms through the parentheses are gonna multiply, so two times x. All right, let's expand out the top. So we've got e to the x minus x e to the x, and then minus e to the x. The reason we did that is because the e to the x's are going to cancel off, and we're gonna be left with minus x e to the x all over e to the two x. And now we can even make that answer even more simplified because we've got an e to the x on the top and on the bottom, we've got an e to the x squared because we've got e to the 2x. So we can divide by e to the x and cancel off top and bottom. Leaves us with negative x on the top and on the bottom, we've got e to the x because we got rid of one of them. All right, so that's a great answer. But if you fully simplify for, for that last step, it's a full marks, fully simplified answer. Okay, moving on now, we're gonna try a couple of applied questions. So a couple of applications we looked at in the calculus topic, we're now gonna get some exponential terms involved. So for the first one, we're gonna find the equation of the tangent to this function at this point. All right, so to find the equation of the tangent, the first thing we need to find is the gradient of the tangent. We find that by differentiating the function. So we've got y equals uh, minus two e to the three x. We're gonna find the derivative by keeping the exponential term as it is, and then we're gonna multiply by the derivative of the index. So the derivative of three x is three, so we times by three, and we get minus six e to the three x. 
Okay, there's the calculus done. Now, if we substitute in our x value, the answer to that is gonna be the gradient of the tangent at that point. Okay, so we've got our derivative. If you sub in the x value, it gives you the gradient of the tangent. So at x equals one, if we sub it in, we're gonna get e to the three times one. So that's just gonna be e cubed. Uh, if we put that into our calculator, it's gonna be a long and gross decimal. So for now, we're just gonna leave it as minus six e cubed, like they've done with the point in the question. They've just left it in terms of e. All right, so that right there is our expression for the gradient of the tangent. Now we're gonna use our point gradient formula because we have a point in the question. We have a gradient that we just found here. Now we can use this equation. So we're gonna sub in the x and y values here and we're gonna sub in the gradient down here. So we've got y take away negative two e to the three. Gradient is negative six e cubed from over here. And we've got x take away the x value of one. We're going to simplify this as a plus on the left-hand side. We're gonna expand the brackets. So we've got negative six e cubed x and we've got positive six e cubed. Now we'll simplify again by just subtracting two e cubed from both sides so we get y by itself. So if we take two e cubed away from six e cubed, it gets us four e cubed. And that right there, it looks pretty weird, but that is our answer for the equation of the tangent at this point. All right, beautiful. On to the last one for today. We have the displacement of an object after t seconds is given by x equals e to the t squared. So this is the equation that gives you the position at time t. Question is asking us to find the acceleration after one second. So hopefully you remember from calculus at the very end of the topic, we looked at how if you take your displacement equation and you differentiate it, you get your velocity equation. And then if you differentiate your velocity, you end up with your acceleration. So first thing we need to do here is we need to find the acceleration by differentiating this expression here twice. So first up, we'll get velocity by doing the derivative of x with respect to t. So if we differentiated this, once again, we're gonna leave it as e to the t squared, that part doesn't change. We're gonna multiply it by the derivative of the power, which is just 2t. All right, so e to the t squared stays the same, multiplied by the derivative of the power, gets us 2t e to the t squared. Okay, now we have our velocity. We are going to have to differentiate this one more time so we can get our acceleration. So acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Now think about this equation here. How are we going to differentiate this? It's similar to a question we did earlier in the lesson today because we have a product. We have 2t multiplied by e to the t squared. So to differentiate a product, we've got to use the product rule. Okay, so here is our product rule in action. We're going to differentiate the first part, the 2t. If we differentiate that, we'll get two. So the second part, e to the t squared, will be left alone. Then we'll leave the 2t as it is. So 2t is chilling. And we're going to differentiate e to the t squared, which we've already done earlier today. If we differentiate e to the t squared, we get 2t e to the t squared. All right, so that right there is one half differentiated and that right there is the other half differentiated, and we add those two together. So we're gonna get two e to the t squared, plus we're gonna get four t squared here. So we've got four t squared e to the two, e to the t squared. So lots of powers, we've got e to the power of a power, it's like a triple layer cake here. All right, so there is our acceleration. So now we can answer the question. The question was find the acceleration after one second. So we've got to take our expression right here, and we're gonna substitute in t equals one. So we're gonna have two e to the one right there. Then we're gonna have four times, well, one squared is just one. So we've got four times one times e to the one. So we end up with this right here. We'll have two e plus four e. And then we can simplify that as six e. Okay, so taking our acceleration right here, subbing in t equal to one, Simplifying a little bit and we get acceleration is equal to six times e and remember e is just a number 2.7. So this is six times 2.7 ish All right, beautiful there are plenty of exercise questions for you to practice in 803 If you are having trouble and need some more help as always, please send me a message Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers